Hello, this will be part two in the series where I'm looking at ancient uh, lifting technology, also rigging technology. So it's not just about lifting stones, it's also about the ability to move them across land. Uh, the red pill has become uh, a meme in regards to taking the red pill to break free of, of the uh, orthodoxy. However, the so-called alternative becomes the orthodoxy and, and you, you need to red pill yourself from the what's you know what would call themselves the alternative but is the, the fake news equivalent uh, of this and so if you're only this is a good point if you're only listening to sources to views which you already hold then you are living in an echo chamber and you're not getting the full truth and so this will be part two and for instance like let's go back now one of these you know so-called alternative orthodox free thinking sort of things is regard to levitated mass here in Los Angeles and that um, somehow it, uh, it proves uh, again the lost high ancient technology um, argument again I must say there are some very interesting very unanswered questions yet and um, I, I cannot answer those but f what we first need to do is acknowledge the fact that there a lot of the so-called questions mysteries are not mysteries at all not not even slightly mysteries they're completely solved and there's ample evidence of that and this is one example of the of as the new as the expression goes fake news um 300 so original was 120 tons a broker crane which sort of proves that it can't be done but actually it just proves that they used the wrong crane Cranes were uh, more than capable of dealing with that weight at the time. And uh, again, this specialized trailer had to be used. But again, this is this has nothing to do with the, the weight of the stone. This has got to do about the economics and the weight limits of roads, which are covered in part one. And again, this is this is gr basic stuff. This is really, ba and, you know, it, it's not that, you know, you don't need to be some sort of specialist to know these things, all you've got to do is fact check, counter check an argument. Anytime you have a theory, the real way to test a theory is to understand what will uh, prove that your theory is actually incorrect. That's a if you have have a viewpoint, of something that you're searching for, and you only search for that which agrees with you, then you're not really developing a rigorous theory. To any any idea, you also need to know establish well what would disprove this and that's an important feature which is overlooked it's a echo chamber so again this stuff with uh, levitated mass in los angeles it's the, the narr it's a false narrative uh, whether it's intentional or not i can't say but it, it's still bunk now as an example so okay, okay uh, it was you know 340 tons and oh wow wow this is some big weight or something like that um, however, now let's go to uh, back to Pompeii. Okay, so um, this is Pompeii's kill, uh, pillar or Pompeii's column in Alexandria, Egypt. It was set up by the Romans. Okay, so Pompeii's pillar, Alexandria, Egypt, 297 AD. It was actually set up by Diocletian, not Pompeii. Um, it was a, a like so often a lot of these monuments are very like Trajan's column and many of these other massive structures erected and constructed by the Romans across a huge you know across the Mediterranean awesome engineers uh, the, the aqueducts all these things it's it's not they left us excellent records of their achievements and they still exist today so what's special about this column well it's pretty bloody big um, and it's also from uh, granite from Aswan. So from Alexandria, this was cut. It's a single, it's, it's unusual, but it's a single piece column. Uh, in the Pantheon in Rome, the columns in the front there are also made of Egyptian um, granite from Aswan as well. So uh, again, they're, they're not small columns and they're single piece columns as well. They were, <coughs> pardon, quarried. They were again cut and carved in very smooth, um, very high high skilled work and it weighs 285 tons so 340 was the levitated mass which broke cranes and and you know 
all this type of stuff. So just as an idea where we see where Alexandria is, that's uh, Pompey's pillar and his Aswan site. Now it's famous because of this uh, unfinished obelisk. Now the quarry itself has all the trademarks of ancient stone cutting techniques which are still used and practiced, have been practiced across the world, across time, still are used now and they're very rarely mentioned unfortunately. Um, it does a disservice to the, to the genius and, and the skill and the labor that went into it but anyway. Uh, so not too far from there we have the Temple of Karnak and that's where this obelisk was originally place. It's now called the Lateran Obelisk in the Vatican. So from Karnak it was taken to Alexandria and by Constantine II. Uh, interesting side note, Constantine converted uh, Rome to Christianity and his mother Helena uh, visited the Holy Land and passed through Baalbek and she um, commented on, on the stonework there. Again that's this impressive stonework uh, no doubt. We'll get to uh, Baalbek soon enough. Now, uh, originally, um, it's lost 450 tons. So I'm showing this picture as it exists now in the Vatican. It was uh, 13 foot longer, but we'll we'll get to that in a moment. So 450 tons. This is significantly, well, not even significantly, 25% uh, more than 25% heavier than the um, so called, like this sort of this, which is used as this sort of touchstone. Um, the levi levitating mass, so much uh, heavier, or twenty significantly heavier, twenty five percent. But uh, when you're talking, once you're getting over a hundred tons, two hundred tons, the, the principles, the, the 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 laws of physics do not change. Only the scale of it changes, and so it's just uh, upscaling. But the, the 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 basic equations and maths involved in it uh, stay the same. So from Alexandria it was then shipped to Rome and uh, taken on a barge. So again, that the Egyptians moved these uh, colossal statues and obelisks, you know, it's, that's pretty impressive. But what gets lost in this is the fact that all the Romans did it too and they actually shipped it across the ocean, which is a significantly more impressive achievement. Uh, this is a a carving which commemorates the lifting of there. I mentioned this in part one where we see the winch and we see the block and tackle this which is a, a, an anti-gravity device it's a, the, the basis of cranes and pulleys. A modern crane the, it's not some super powerful motor that lifts the weight. The, the motor cannot only can lift a portion of the weight it's the pulleys it's the block and tackle it's simply by looping these ropes through and using high school physics really that uh, allow people to do this. It's it's not magic. It's not uh, a, you know some freaky lost technology. It's been used since antiquity. The uh, ships rigging of ancient ships shows this in part one, um, and it still continues to this day. It's the basis of our world. Uh, the inclined plane, the block or the pulley, um, the lever, the gear. These are the basic machines, simple as they're called, the simple machines, which make up every machine we have. It's just a, a varying combination of these same uh, long-known principles. It's, again, this is well recorded. It's not not at all really in, dis, in disputed, except for those who choose to live in an echo chamber and they don't want to hear things which go against the narrative. But So the original ladder and obelisk, 450 tonnes, not only moved across from Karnak to Alexandria, it was then shipped to Rome and then brought and lifted in place. And this is we sh here we see the commemoration of it. It's a block and tackle. That's all it is. It's these pulleys and loops and ropes, which each time you loop the rope, it halves the weight required. So that if you, um, with uh, you know, four or five loops and then you multiply, you have, it's not just one team, you have multiple teams. And we'll look at that in a moment. You don't have to lift anywhere near, you only have to lift a fraction of, of the weight. So it might get down to 30 tons needs to be lifted. Now you split that up between a bunch of uh, workers and slaves. That's nothing. It's no no weight at all. Um, a, a hundred, I'm showing in part one, a hundred ton chain block you can buy off the shelf. One person can lift 100 ton without breaking a sweat. This is, again, physics, it's... You can like literally buy this, order this stuff off the shelf. The books going back through time, these these kind of carvings, 
actually show it. It's not in dispute at all, except for those who choose not to believe. Or well, it's not even choose not to believe. Uh, it's not a it's not a thing about belief. It's, they, these are these are facts, and that needs to be kept in mind. Now, again, we see a winch. This time, it's a this is just a big winch where people walk on it. You could use a capstan, which is when you see the sailors walking around in circles with a lever. So a winch is just really applying force in a similar way to what a, it's lev literally leverage and the block and tackle working together. So again, using these force, these two simple machines together, you can lift uh, quite a bit of uh, very heavy weight with very little energy. So as a comparison, this is 340 tonne and this is supposed to be whiz bang. We did, you know, the cranes existed at the time, the equipment existed, uh, exists now, even in 1969, the much less, much, uh, the 120 tonne stone, which couldn't get lifted by a crane, broke the boom, woohoo. Well, it's, it's nothing in comparison to what was achieved, what was known to be have achieved by the ancients. This is, these are just facts. Now, uh, the other big one that keeps getting mentioned is the, uh, well, at Baalbek, the actual biggest stones that were moved are 800 tons. So, uh, a little over, uh, a little less than twice these, the, the Lateran obelisk. But there's no, like, there's not a magic cutoff point where suddenly the physics change. The physics stay the same. And firstly, and another thing that just keeps getting repeated and repeated is that these were uphill. Some people even say it's half a mile uphill. Absolute bollocks. The, the quarry, is half a mile away but at the lowest point of the quarry it's um, uh, 10 meters below so over that distance you have and, and this triangle you see here is highly exaggerated that's uh, three quarters of a degree so I've, I, the actual angle is much less and, and again mechanical advantage and inclined plane um, you're not really adding any it, it's effectively zero and again, this is just a p part of a false narrative that keeps going around. It was uh, the higher parts of the quarry are actually above it, and so that you would have had a downhill advantage. So the, the mechanical advantage of, of gravity was actually helping you. And that's just, even what, people know this, and they still keep pushing it, and that's just wrong. Um, again, so that's the pregnant mother stones, and important, and uh, these stones, which are said to be the largest stones ever moved. Again, not true. They will never move. They're still attached to the earth. Again, this just needs to, to die a natural death, this particular story, false narrative that keeps getting pushed. Um, the Lateran obelisk was later toppled by an earthquake or intentionally pulled down. It was partially broken. 1858, it was relifted by the very famous uh, Pope, um, Sixtus V. And as it currently is, it weighs 330 tons, which is basically uh, the same weight has the levitated mass, and they did this. Um, we actually have the drawings and the descriptions of how they did this. Again, this is physics and ingenuity, and, and we need to good on these. You know, this is awesome. This is awesome knowledge. This is stuff that can be applied, and yet for some reason, well, like I actually know very well why the reason it's not talked about is because it destroys the narrative of this uh, ancient anti-gravity lost high technology. Uh, garbage that just keeps going around so this there you go that's the you know that's that's the thing now uh, other examples include the Luxor obelisk here I've just photoshopped it back in place that's where it originally was that was moved to Paris in 1833 it's 280 tons again the description or, or you know hundreds and hundreds of witnesses we have no, there's no doubt that they were just using simple technology block and tackle to bring it into place Again, no doubt, uh, yet still keeps getting pushed on. Cleopatra's uh, needle in London, 220 tons, same thing. Um, Cleopatra's needle in New York, same thing. And yeah, when you understand physics and the science, uh, and the fact that this is recorded history, not in dispute, but people, you know, you're living in an echo chamber, I'm sorry, and uh, this needs to, you know... The recorded history, the recorded facts, outweigh the the, the uh, speculation and pure fiction which surrounds a lot of these things. It's physics, rigging and lifting. If you want to talk stone cutting, talk to a stonemason. If you want to talk uh, lifting and rigging, talk to a lifter and rigger. Don't talk to a 
second-rate tour guide.